الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome again to the stories of the Prophet's peace be upon them We are going into the timeline that happened in history and covers the stories of the Prophet's peace be upon them And we have reached the story of Ibrahim, Abraham, alayhi salam, peace be upon him. We have covered his story when he grew up in Iraq, and then he moved to Syria, and then moved to Egypt, and then finally he settled in Palestine with his wife, Sarah. He was joined in Palestine with his nephew, the, the one who believed with, uh, in him early on, uh, and uh, his nephew Lut, Lut alayhi salam, joined him in Palestine. He ordered Lut, who became also a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to move and preach to a group of people in the area of Sodom, Sodom. Uh, these people who lived in, next to the Dead Sea were uh, uh, unbelievers, uh, very troubled people, and we will cover their story, inshallah, later on. Although the story of Lut happened during the story of Ibrahim, peace be upon them all, uh, but we will, so we will go in sequence and we will cover the story of Ibrahim first and then we will come back to the story of Lut alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam, peace be upon him, stayed in Palestine with his wife Sarah and his maid servant who was a slave, uh, Hagar, Hajar. And he devoted his time to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he earned his living as a merchant, and he was a very successful merchant. So he delegated this work to others that work with him, and he devoted himself to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to call others to the way of Allah and to the one God. Um, and he continued preaching Islam, and uh, Islam meaning the, the, the submission to God, uh, and the Tawheed, meaning the oneness of Allah, in the area of Palestine. A small event happened in the house of Ibrahim that led to major events later on. Among these major events is the start or the birth of Mecca, the great city in Western Arabia. Ibrahim lived alone with his wife Sarah, as I said, and his maid servant. And when she reached 85 or 86 years old, she realized that she was not uh, able to get any children. And uh, Ibrahim himself was quite old with gray hair. And Sarah knew that Ibrahim longed for children. He wished that he has a son. Um, and uh, since she couldn't have any children, she decided to offer him. Uh, her servant, her slave, Hajar, to Ibrahim to, uh, uh, to be the wife of Ibrahim. Of course, that was a very great personal sacrifice of Sarah, who loved her husband so much. But um, she not only gave this as a sake for her husband, but also to ensure that he would have a child that would carry the message of God later on. Uh, That decision, of course, is not an easy for a woman because of jealousy and these feelings that this is my husband. I don't want to share him with anyone else. But regardless of these feelings, her sacrifice was so great and she allowed her husband to have an, a second wife. But instead of a second wife, he gave her, she gave her, him, uh, she gave him her own servant as a second wife. Invariably, Sarah began to be very jealous of Hagar, especially when she, Hagar, Hagar conceived a child and she was pregnant. And later on, she gave birth to her son, the first son of Abraham, Ishmael, Ismail, alayhi salam. Of course, that is very natural for any woman to feel jealousy. And although it was her own idea that Ibrahim marries Hagar, and she gave him this slave to be his wife, but still 
jealousy overcame Sarah. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, describes that uh, how, how much jealousy she had by saying that Hagar, Hajar, used to wear a long dress that would not only cover her feet, but would, she would pull behind her. And the reason she did that is to conceal her pregnancy from Sarah and also to cover her footsteps when she goes to uh, visit uh, Ibrahim in his room. So glory be to Allah. Despite uh, their deep faith and piety, even the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, had this jealousy. These are natural feelings for a woman. And uh, men should be very aware of these feelings and should not, uh, should not harm their, their wives by, by in inspiring these feelings of jealousy. You should be very careful that a woman out of love has these jealousy feelings. Uh, and we saw this in... in uh, the, in the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, jealousy among his wives. But that was also very apparent in the house of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. And <clears throat> although he made two separate houses, one for Sarah and one for Hagar, but still uh, the jealousy of Sarah towards Hajar uh, uh, was very clear. And we, saw, we see this in the sayings of the Prophet, and we see this in the Old and the New Testament, the Bible and the Torah. Uh, but they, uh, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, they exaggerate this jealousy. And they take it to a level of an unethical behavior of Sarah. But Sarah was a, a very pious woman, and she, uh, she feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So although she had this jealousy, but at the same time, she kept it to a level that is controlled by fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you read the stories in the Old and the New Testament, you'll be amazed. How to a level that she had no limits, and she would break all God's rules for the sake of her jealousy, and that shouldn't be. Anyway, one day, Ibrahim alayhi salam asked Hajar, to get herself and her son, his only son, Ishmael, uh, who was still a baby at that time, he asked her to get ready for a long journey. A few days later, Ibrahim took Hajar and Ishmael, Ismail, out of their home into this journey towards Arabia. Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam usually would travel on al-buraq. Al-buraq is an, an animal that God has created for the prophets, and it, they would use it to travel long distances in a very short period of time. But when others com accompany them, like in this case, they would use normal animals, and they took camels in their way to Arabia. Of course, the journey took some time until they reached this certain place in Western Arabia, which is called now Mecca. It was an isolated, deserted valley right in the middle of hot desert between mountains, no vegetation, no water, no food, no people, nothing. Just a valley in between mountains. And there were no signs of animals or humans or uh, eatable plants in that valley. Completely empty. Just a desert terrain. Dry, empty, hot place. Suddenly, Ibrahim salam stopped. They settled in that place. He left his wife his child with some food and some water, and he rode on the camel on his way back. 
and he spoke no words at all. He walked away and left them to their fate. Of course, his heart was full of love and concern, but that was a decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not look back, nor did he hesitate. Hajar was surprised. She, in desperation, hurried after Ibrahim, asking, Oh, Ibrahim, what are you doing? Where are you leaving us? There's no water, there's no food, there's no, there's no one, no, no people. What are you doing? And Ibrahim did not reply. Just continued walking. Just imagine how Ibrahim felt at that moment. Just imagine the feelings of Ibrahim, love and concern, but at the same time, total obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And imagine the feelings of Hajar, who has a, a child and she's left in the middle of the desert. She, so she continued after him, asking him, what are you doing? How could you leave us this place? Just leave us anywhere else. Leave us with some people. Ibrahim did not reply, just continued. Until Hajar asked Ibrahim, is this the command of Allah to you? Did Allah command you to do so? And Ibrahim said, yes. Now, listen to the answer of Hajar. Now, the order of Allah to Ibrahim is to leave them in this deserted place with no water, no food, and no one around. What did she say? Did she complain? Did she reject the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? She answered in a way that is a lesson to everyone. She said, since this is the order of Allah, we are not going to be lost. We're not going to be lost. As long as this is the command of Allah, we shall not be lost. When Allah gives you a command and you obey, you will not be lost. If he tells you don't deal with interest in the banks, and you obey, don't worry, you will not be lost. If he tells you to wear hijab, don't worry. No matter how much pressure they put around you, like our sisters in France or other places, you shall not be lost as long as you obey the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, look how a faithful person, how a believer acts towards the orders of Allah. No hesitation. What is Islam? What is the word Islam means? Islam means submission without any hesitation. No negotiation, no hesitation, no objection to the orders of Allah. Acted. So she had faith as much as Ibrahim had faith. And she obeyed the order of Allah and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she went back. It is a golden example of patience and obedience and trust for all believers throughout time. And that is why we see that the story of Hajar is not only related in the Quran and recited forever in the Quran, but the footsteps of Hajar, as we shall, we shall see, will be followed by all believers because she set the example on, for every believer on how to act. Uh, how to act towards the words. Of, uh, she set the example to all believers on how to act towards the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, she went back. And Ibrahim alayhi salam continued and then when she 
could not see him anymore, he stopped. And then he started to make a prayer, a dua, a prayer. He said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, oh my Lord, I have left in Mecca, in a place where there is no water and there is no one and there is no food and there is no plants. I have left my descendant, my only son and my wife. Oh Allah, I ask you by, my, by your mercy to have mercy on them. Oh Allah, I ask you to send people with hearts of idatan min al nas. I don't want you to send anyone. I want you to send people that have hearts to that place to accompany them. And then, O oh Allah, I would ask you that they would worship you and continue worshiping you. Look what he's asking for. O oh Allah, I would ask you by your mercy that among the descendants of my son, you shall raise a prophet that would teach them knowledge and wisdom and purify them so that they would worship you. And he continued to pray and pray. See, whenever you are in need, whenever you have a stressful situation, turn back to Allah. Many of us, when, when we are in a stressful situation, uh, financially or otherwise, we depend on our own thinking on how to solve it and so on. And you should do that. You should, you should try to solve it and try your best. But don't depend on your work. Ask Allah. Call upon Him. Seek refuge with Him. Ask for His help. Ibrahim alayhi salam did and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listened. Meanwhile, Hajar went back to her son. She started to nurse Ishmael with her milk and she drank the little water that she had left. Very soon all the water dried up and her milk also dried up. And Ishmael started crying out of thirst. And there was no one to help her around. So she started calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she started to feel very thirsty herself. So now her son is crying. And a, a child crying would break the heart of his mother. So she couldn't stay. She couldn't just listen to the crying. It's breaking their, her heart. And there is no one to talk to. There is no one to, to, to seek help with. So she started to run. She doesn't know what to do. So she decided to look for someone to help her. And the best place to do that is to go on top of a mountain and look around. And the closest mountain to her was a very small hill called Al-Safa. Al-Safa. So she climbed on top of Al-Safa to get a better view of the valley below in hope that she could find some water or someone or any sign that might help her. But there was nothing. There was nothing in sight. There was no water inside. There was no human activity at all. So she descended the hill. And when she was at the bottom of the hill, she started to run. And then when she started climbing, she started to walk to the next mountain and Marwa, and she started to look around, and there was nothing. Now the natural thing is to go to the third mountain or a hill, but she did not go to the third mountain. She went back to the first mountain. It doesn't make sense. Why would she go back to the same mountain? But see, now uh, Marwa is far away from her son, and if she goes somewhere else, she would, she would fear for her son. So now logic tells her she should move to the next mountain while, while emotions tell her don't be away from your son. And emotions overcame logic. 
So she went back. And she kept going back and forth seven times. And that is why we Muslims go seven times between these two mountains on the footsteps of a woman. Have you seen any religion that gave so much glory to a woman that it is a worship, it is a must that we would walk on the same footsteps of a woman to glorify this woman and to glorify the feelings of a, of a mother. On the seventh time, on the last time she was on Al-Marwa, she heard a sound. What did she hear? What happened after that is our next story, inshallah. Thank you for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.